I'm in Oslo, Norway for the World Year of Physics, but now I'm studying some of the history and culture of this great country. Wow, I'd better get to the Viking Ship Museum for my video conference. I've got to hand it to the Vikings. How they found their way across the Atlantic Ocean without maps is amazing. Well, they didn't have maps like ours, but they were pretty sophisticated navigators. Hi, Dr. D. I was beginning to wonder if you were going to find the museum. Well, it's easy to get distracted when you're doing research. And soon I'll be going to Andenus about the Arctic Circle to see the Northern Lights. Dr. D, isn't the Alamar LiDAR Observatory in Andenes? Yes, but how do you know about the observatory in Andenes? Ula and Nina, some of our fellow geocachers, live there. And they also happen to be members of the NASA Sci-Files Kids Club. That's cool. If you send me their coordinates, I can meet them. Speaking of coordinates, as I mentioned in my email, I have some questions about the history of navigation. Where do you want to start? Didn't the Vikings discover America about 1000 AD, long before Columbus? That's right, the Vikings were excellent navigators and shipbuilders. This Viking ship made of oak is called the Osebeg. It is 22 meters long and was likely the burial ship of a Viking queen. The Gokstad was probably built around 890 AD. In addition to sails, it also had 16 pairs of oars. In 1893, a replica of the Gokstad sailed from Norway to Canada in 28 days without the aid of a compass. Wow, that's amazing! How do they navigate without a compass? The Vikings probably used stars to navigate. A star named Polaris, which is located above the Earth's North Pole, can be used to find north. I know. Polaris is sometimes called the North Star. It's always in the same place in the sky, and you use the Big Dipper to find it. Very good. But when the Vikings sailed in the summer months, they would have had difficulty finding the North Star. Why is that? Because Norway is so far north, there are places where the sun never sets in the summer. That's why it's called the land of the midnight sun. Even in southern Norway, it doesn't get really dark at night. Dr. D, how would they navigate without a compass or the use of the stars? Lots of ways. For example, they relied upon landmarks, they used ocean currents, prevailing winds and swells, and they observed the migrations of birds and whales to find their way. Is it possible that they used the sun? Yes, they apparently used the sun's shadow and the rising and setting positions of the sun to find north. Okay, and if there are clouds? Some people think they used a sunstone to locate the rising or setting sun when there were clouds on the horizon. I have a piece right here. How does it work? It's called Iceland Spar. Put a dot on top and look through it, you'll see two dots. You rotate it until both dots are equally dark, then the crystal points toward the sun. That's pretty ingenious. Of course, they would have loved modern navigational technology like the sextant, a seagoing clock, or especially a GPS. Our GPS, however, is causing us some problems. What do you mean? It's giving us lots of random coordinates, even when we're not moving. Interesting. It makes it hard to find a cache. I have a friend at NASA Langley Research Center who works a lot with global positioning systems. I'll email you his information. I'm sure he can help you. Until then, I can tell you where to get a good sunstone. Thanks, Dr. D. But after I finish my research, I think I'll just give him a call. What about this one? If we were putting Jacob's bike in our cache, I'd say great. Remember, we have to hide this when we're finished. Plus, I'll never get that on the plane. Hmm. I wonder what my profit margin would be for these plastic containers in a yard sale. Note to self. Investigate long-term investment potential in plastics. Did you read Bianca and Jacob's Get Up and Go sheets? Yes, and we still need to learn about how satellites and GPS work if we want to complete our assignment. Dr. D mentioned talking to a friend of his at NASA. Yes, maybe we can meet him after we finish making our geocache. And finding supplies for your camping trip. By the way, how is it possible that you get to go on a camping trip to Colorado? Isn't that expensive? These, Catherine, are the benefits of being on the board of a high-profile financial institution. You're a member of the board? Well, no, my mom is. She's taken me camping after our meetings. 
I'll tell you all the details when you take me to the airport. I can't take you to the airport. I can't drive yet. Oh, right. Note to self. Also, investigate investment opportunities in transportation companies. So what's up? How will the treehouse detectives find the geocache? What should they do if their GPS devices go out again? Find out in the next exciting chapter of The Case of the Technical Knockout. 